Okay, I'll bring the meeting to order. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? Uh, brief update on uh, union negotiations for the, the board at the end. Okay. Is there anything else to many members? Okay. Um, we, oh, sorry, Eric. Uh, could we have, um, if Kim's still on at the end, maybe she could give a plug for the value mapping um, meeting on Wednesday that the Conservation Commission is is hosting. Okay. Thank. Thanks for reminding us, Kyle. I can give a little yeah. plug for that okay. if uh, Kim or somebody else isn't available. Perfect. Okay. And anyone else? If not. Let's go into the budget. Uh, I believe, Brian, you may have a couple of very minor uh, corrections that were found. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen here uh, for the board and for everybody else. All right. So uh, we made a couple updates. We updated some figures from the library and made a couple fixes there. And the um, and skate park. Uh, I got a little bit of assistance on some um, other figures. Uh, that should not say deficit. That should be surplus. Make that change quickly, um, but overall, the there's no no change to the the tax rate or anything. Um, so so if you, no I significant change to the tax rate. We are still looking at uh, one million nine hundred seven thousand four hundred twenty dollars and three cents. Uh, to be raised by taxes. So Brian, when, when, when you went through this, yep. um, and you said there's some library and some and skate park and, you know, just scrolled through where you're just going to the bottom line or trying to show I'm unable to print that. So I have no idea what those changes were. Okay. You I really went to the bottom line. Uh, okay. This is okay. almost what you saw at the last uh, select board meeting, but I was able to make a couple updates. Uh, also, we have, I got better numbers for uh, the capital equipment fund. So that had, had a little update to it too with slightly more accuracy, uh, but it should not have a significant effect on the tax rate. Um, let's see what you got in your packet. Um, it is the same proposed amount that you got in your packet um yeah which leaves us at mike uh brian can you mute everyone please except for board members yeah Okay, that's done. All right, so the amount to be raised by taxes is pretty much what you've seen in your packet. Let's see, that was, or the, the amount to be raised by taxes has not changed at all. Um, the real change changes on what we've got from the meeting or in the packet is a fix on jumping ahead here it is just some labeling uh, that the labels and numbers didn't line up on uh, what this described as our raise amount to be raised by taxes in FY21. It was correct at the top of the page, but in this summary, it was incorrect. 
uh, and the interest numbers are updated. So very, very little has changed. Okay. Uh, and no significant changes and no changes in uh, taxes from what you've seen. I would be looking at some point here for a motion from the board to adopt the proposed town budget for the town meeting and a second, then we can open up for discussion of board members as well as uh, uh, in the public before we vote. So moved, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Okay. Is there any board members discussion and or even amendments could be proposed if they felt they want to change something? I just wanted to um, just double check that, Brian, you had Susan and those second and third set of eyes on this, like we discussed. Yes, uh, Susan has not personally been able to, uh, but uh, I got some assistance from Beth Foy and uh, some of the library board members. Uh, we're able to take a look at it. Um, it is still not as many people as would see it on another year. Uh, the auditors are not in the office this year and they normally give it a pass. Um, so yeah, there are fewer people seeing it this year than would be ideal. But uh, yeah, I, I'm personally taking kind of as great of an effort as I can to try and track these down. Um, and when I make the changes from the working copy to the print copy, uh, I'm going to get another set, another couple, uh, a little bit more help on looking it over too, because uh, we've had errors introduced at that stage before too. Okay, thank you. So I guess I should ask the board if there are some minor corrections that are found during that process before it goes to print, is that something that the board wants to uh, uh, install in its motion, that allowance of the, the budget as presented with those small minor changes if required going ahead? And I would ask for the motioner and the seconder. Is that a friendly amendment? How do we typically word that, Eric? Is it like within a certain? Uh, Mike, did you make the motion? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see, how would the good way to make that motion be? There are errors within it. One hundred dollar. Yeah. Who, the... Something that doesn't significantly change the budget or the uh, even the intent of the wording. So what did I just question. say? I think what'd you say within a hundred bucks? Of the of the net, yeah. Okay. I'll change it. I'll change it to that. Yeah, it's a friendly considered a friendly amendment. Yes. And who seconded the motion? I, I seconded it. It's friendly. Okay. Is Donna here? She yes. is. Let me make sure that we're making sense to her. And then just a question, what if it goes over that amount, then what, what do we do? We'd have to have a special meeting. Okay. Okay. Any other board member discussion or questions? And if not, I'll open up the public. Okay. Uh, if there's anybody in the public who'd like to speak to the budget, please raise your hand. Um, you can do that with a virtually uh, under the participants tab. Uh, there's a raise hand button. Um, if you raise your hand on your camera, I hopefully will see you, but the, the, the button is the most reliable. Brian, will you scroll left just a little bit so we can see the um, A H column? No. Uh, the, the estimated change to based on assessed value. Ah. There we go. All right, that looks good. Do we have anyone, Brian? 
I'm not seeing anybody. Okay. If there is no one that would like to ask a question or comment, I'll bring it back to the board. If the board's prepared, and I believe the board is prepared. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Congratulations, we have a proposed budget. <laughs> okay, ballot item. Okay, give me one moment with this. Got chat on again. Okay, chat is disabled. All right, uh, the ballot items. So we have for the ballot, we have, uh, I'm just going to run in order as it appears on the ballot. Um, so this might not get to some of the ones that people are most interested in uh, till a little bit later, but let's do the appropriations as a block. Uh, we have an increase for uh, the Lamoille Home Health and Hospice, Clarina Howard Nichols Center and the Red Cross. Then we have new appropriation requests for the North Central Vermont Recovery Center and Salvation Farms. Um, no changes to what you saw last week, but uh, I wanted to run through that again. Um, the is next... there any, before you continue, Brian, is there any board member who wants to stop, put a hold on any of those proposed articles as presented? If not, we'll just continue right down through. Okay, I'm not seeing any heads moving. Go okay. ahead, Brian. So our next section uh, is the uh, issue on uh, cannabis and legalization of sales. Uh, the recommendation, I'm gonna pull this up so we can all read it. The recommendation is uh, that we actually split this into two because it's really two separate questions uh, kind of implied by one. Uh, it came in as should we have a retail sales license and an integrated license and those are really two different types of license and we could adopt one or the other or both so it's not really a single question. So the recommendation is that we split this into two uh, to allow for that, that difference. Uh, so the recommendation was also uh, for the, the audience, the recommendation from our attorney and our last meeting was that the change of the language from legalization to a research committee was a substantial change from the petitioned item that you can see the, the difference between research something and legalize something uh, that is a pretty big change and so it was recommended that we would not make that we should not make that change because that would be a significant departure on a, a uh, binding ballot item. And this particular article or petition was a legally brought forward petition. It is a binding vote. It is something that the voters do have and are the only ones that have authority on the question. So we would have no choice if this had come in with the uh, pre-rescribed uh, requirement for a number of signatures, we would not have had any choice but to have this on the warning. And while uh, I guess technically, we could uh, reject the petition because it didn't have the required signatures. However, we did inform the public beforehand that we were not, we were gonna honor any petition without signatures because of the COVID-19. So it would uh, not be, uh, you know, 
fair or right for the select board to uh, to now throw it out, in my opinion. So there so, really is not much discussion here for the board. The person who's who's made the who, who submitted the petition is, I believe, wants to withdraw it at this point. Though is I think is asking for that. No, I'll I'll ask for Rosemary's guidance here. But as I understand, once she has it in her hands, uh, it's beyond the control of the petitioner. All right, I'm going to pull Rosemary up. Okay, if you can unmute Rosemary. I believe what Eric said was true. Uh, Mike? I don't think we should believe. I don't think that should be a proper answer. I think we should know one way or another, not just believe. Uh, do we have a, a book, chapter, and verse on that? When I say I believe that to be the case, that is the case, and I was asking for confirmation from Rosemary. Okay, so you, you're you using the word is believe as a true fact then? Yes. Okay. Just want to clarify that. I, I have a lot of sympathy for how the board feels on this. I think this was a uh, a very disappointing uh, advice and ruling that we received on this, but it was pretty clear on uh, on what our options are, which are uh, is not much. Yeah, I don't know what to say about this one. If this is the way it, it has has to go, it sounds like there's not much. No wiggle room. <laughs> it's not without contradicting ourselves. That uh, you know we're limited by legal restrictions and kind of you know if we rejected this, somebody else out there might have raised it if they didn't already think it was done. And so we could really be by going back on our word, we could really be undermining the confidence of the voters in our ability to govern. Um, you know, by causing them to second guess ourselves that we we say one thing and then wait till after the deadline and they could have submitted it if we'd let them know that we weren't going to, that we were going to reject it. Um, so yeah, I think our hands are, are pretty well tied on it. Um, but yeah, it, it's deeply unsatisfying and not the way most of us wanted this to, to work out. Uh, Mike? I, I don't believe we could have rejected it if we wanted to. If it had the required signatures, we definitely could not reject it. Yeah. Well, because yeah. it didn't have the signatures any other year uh, if it did not have the 5% of the voters, we could reject it out of hand because it didn't have the prescribed number of uh, uh, voters signatures. Well, we all, the board all works by consensus and when a vote is taken, it is the, the will of the board, but I did vote against that particular thing. And so, you know, for, to make a statement, I reject it. I mean, I, I can't uh, speak for the rest of the board and I'm sure the board won't go along with me, uh, but I want it to be on record that I would like to reject it. Okay, so noted. Anyone else? I don't have a, it just, it, this is a little off topic, but um, in terms of put it on the ballot or not, I guess that's more or less settled at this point, but. I don't have a problem with opt-in. I just want, wanted the community to be able to have a conversation about and set some rules around um, exactly how that would look in Johnson before we go ahead and make the the, the, the uh, decision to opt-in. And uh, whether we opt-in now or whether we opt-in next year um, is not gonna delay a single license from being issued in the town of Johnson. So 
Um, that's uh, where I'm at with it. That's why it's conflicting to me. So thank you. I, I think the, the challenge for us is how we get the message out on what this means and, and educate the voters without being able to, as we've also found our, from our attorney, we cannot be given the, the impression of lobbying or taking an official position and having that within our town report or sure. any of those kind of means. Sure, and, but, and I would hope that regardless of, of how this vote ends up, if it's, even if it's rejected, that the board um, takes this up as an issue um, to begin having discussions in the community about what we would want implementation of this to look like uh, in the town of Johnson, because even if it goes down, it'll probably come back up again next at the next town meeting. It'd be good to have you prepared for that as a community. Very good point. Mike? Another big problem with this is there's too many unanswered questions in the legislature. Uh, I think this is slightly premature and it's too bad that we couldn't have the discussion after everything was all settled in Montpelier. Okay, uh, is there any further board member comments? I think we'll probably take up the uh, a motion to approve the warning when we get to the end, but uh, we're gonna have to work down through each item by consent anyhow, whether uh, keep it in or change it or have, you know, whatever the board's wishes are. Uh, do you want to take public comment at the end or uh, after each item? Why don't we take it after each item Okay. And uh, if there's no further board member comments, we can open it up to public. All right, Kim, I saw your hand. I, I Nat may have started to um, clarify for me. I'm, I'm wondering if these two articles are opt-in lingo. Yes, they are. Okay. Thank you. I think Jessica has her hand up. Okay, Jess, go ahead. I guess I'm uh, curious about uh, the Article 11 about the integrated licenses and where that came from. Um, just looking at Act 164, and I, I, just so everyone knows, I'm here with my, uh, my Johnson taxpayer hat on, not uh, as my work hat. Um, and that says an integrated license, this is uh, 909 integrated license. So an integrated license shall allow the licensee to engage in the activities of cultivator, wholesaler, product manufacturer, retailer, and testing laboratory as provided in section 904 through 908 of this title. And then it says in part B, which is the, my, really is where my question is, an integrated license is only available to an applicant and its affiliates that hold a dispensary registration on April 1st, 2022 there shall be no more than five total integrated licenses, one for each registered dispensary. Upon compliance with all application procedures and requirements, the board shall issue an integrated license to the applicant. The licensee shall have the right to renew the license in accordance with the rules. So I, I guess I'm a little confused as to why that's a separate article here because it would appear that there's only going to be five integrated licenses, at least in this first couple of years, for at the state level, um, because there's five dispensaries in the state and they're making provision for those five businesses that are currently in business to be able to switch over to retail um, and cultivating and testing, et cetera. So, Brian, you want to feel so you, that one? Uh, I'm also going to kind of I uh, expect that Jess is probably more well-versed on the, the act than I am personally. Um, I had understood an integrated license to be for dispensaries or for growers. So that if you were growing and wanted to sell, you would need an integrated license, but I, that might not be the case. Uh, and we can- yeah. And I, I might be mistaken, but but that, that was how I read it, was that there was, at least in this first year or two, they were only gonna inter issue those five um, integrated licenses for those current dispensaries. But, 
but you can leave it. I mean, it's probably no harm, no foul. But. Well, Brian, it's what's probably worth running by that that question by us is make sure that it does apply to us. Um, you know, I'll do a reading and I can send it for final review or something. But the that wasn't my impression, and that wasn't our attorney's impression of what an integrated license was limited to. Okay. Uh, but it's a pretty new act, so uh, we could be we could be wrong. Uh, and like I said, I would yield. Yeah. I would easily yield the expertise on this to to somebody who has a. Uh, you know, I imagine with healthy Lamoille Valley, you probably have a little bit more experience with this than I do. Brian, am I mistaken? I thought the attorney advised that these were two separate types of licenses, a retailer license or an integrated license, and you could have one or the other, or you actually could have both. And that's why yes. it was two separate questions. That was his advice. Yes. And in conversations with our attorney, his understanding and mine was that an integrated license uh, was for a dispensary or for a grower. And because the way the petition came in, it mentioned both of those, right? Right. Yes. That's why we but had- I'm, I'm just not ruling out that we could have misunderstood. Maybe integrated licenses have a, a narrower scope than we understood them to. Uh, I'd like to follow up on that, but I, I don't think that's the case, but I, I could be wrong. There's lots of misunderstandings and interpretation around the state. So um, definitely, you know, go back and ask because it's, I've been in meetings where lawyers have, you know, both had differing views on it. So it's, this, the, this is still, there's a lot open for interpretation around this Act 164 and what things mean. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I think Shane's got his hand up. Thank you, Jessica. We'll, we'll follow up on that. Yeah. Okay, Shane. Uh, hey there. Um, my understanding was the same as Jessica's that the integrated licenses were um, for dispensaries, existing dispensaries, um, and that they were only going to have five uh, for the time being, and that those five were going to go to the existing dispensaries. So um, I, again, you know, we could be wrong, but uh, that was my understanding and that's that's what I've heard from a few other people who are are knowledgeable on this issue um but uh yeah I I you know I am happy that this conversation is happening um and I uh I kind of understand that uh you know the legal advice is that the board has to treat this like a petition that had all of the signatures on it um but I do wonder if, uh, you know, it's not too late to withdraw this and uh, to come back to this conversation at a later time and, uh, you know, have, have this conversation like we've been talking about, um, but do it in a way where we can make sure the language is correct, uh, where we can make sure that, you know, we're, we're setting it up in, in the proper manner um, and not, you know, the, the, the split question and, uh, you know, the, the way everything is, is shaking out is, um, you know, not exactly what I was going for. So um, I'm just interested to hear Brian's take on that. And my, my big concern about withdrawing this or, or if the select board rejected this petition on the grounds that it didn't have enough signatures, um, that is something that the select board could do, but that would be going back on their, on the commitment that they made earlier. And it's possible that uh, somebody else might have raised this petition or might have gone out and gotten signatures if we had not said, you don't need signatures for this. You know, we'll take up this up uh, when you submit it to us. So we, we kind of made the commitment that we would honor these as though they were completed petitions. Uh, and changing direction is uh yeah i think i think it would really undermine the public's trust in in our ability uh which is essential for us for conducting business mike 
Shane, when did you turn this in? Um, I would have to check the email to figure out the exact date, but it was um, maybe what a week before the deadline the board had set. Brian, um, trying to find the email right now. It, it was about a week before the deadline. It, it was. It may have been as late as the Friday before the deadline, but it, it was a, a, about a week. Well, I think it's kind of a stretch uh, to think that if Shane hadn't uh, put out a petition, somebody else would have. Uh, that's getting pretty close to the wire. Uh, on a normal year to have that amount of uh, signatures on a petition. Uh, I think uh, in light of this different and strange year for doing business. Uh, and when the petitioner is right here uh, this evening at this meeting, trying basically imploring us to uh, withdraw this petition, I, I think we ought to uh, concur with the petitioner and withdraw the whole thing. Uh, Mike, are you making that a motion? Yes, I am. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Lacking a second, the motion will die. The motion dies for lack of second. <clears throat> well, I have a question, if I may. Go ahead, Nat. Um, I'm hearing a lot of confusion among knowledgeable, fairly knowledgeable people in the room, and even someone who's consulted an attorney the town attorney about what this integrated license thing is. So if we can't figure it out, but we're going to put it out on a ballot for people, we don't know what the legal ramifications of this are. I'm very uncomfortable putting that on a ballot, that second part of the question on the ballot with so much ambiguity and misunderstanding about lack of clarity about what it means for the community. And I'm not sure that that was even the intent of the petitioner at the time when he, uh, Shane, <laughs> not, wasn't, I'm not sure if that was the intent of Shane at the time when he, when he submitted this to include integrated licenses. So I, I'm not sure that's in the spirit of what he had intended. I don't recall when integrated licenses got added to the question. I know it wasn't in the first draft you gave me, Shane, but uh, yeah, I, I think it got added in uh, subsequently, and I, I think that was an attempt to make sure it complied with Act 164 because integrated licensees is something that's mentioned, you know, frequently throughout. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, I think a lot of this was we were trying to figure out exactly what the language needed to be to set things up properly, um, kind of on the fly. So it wasn't in the first draft of your... No, no. I just if, if we don't know what it means, I, I think it's not responsible to put it on the ballot. Strike Article 11 then. Um, I'd like there are more hands raised, but I would um, probably second that. I think I think the question before the board is uh, this has been run through our attorney. This is on the advice of our town attorney. This is what with the petition he was provided what he read into it as we should be uh, having as an article. Um, so the only question for us is, do we want to reject out of hand the whole article or the whole petition simply under the uh, reasoning that it did not have the required number of signatures? Or if we recognize the petition as it came in, then we would need to follow what our attorney has advised us to have. So there's a direction for the board one way or the other, but we. I've got some more public comment if we're. Okay, why don't you open it up? All right, Kim, you had had your hand up before. I was just gonna ask that if it ended up being on the ballot that at the informational um, session that you the, the town select board could have someone who would speak to pros and cons of such an amendment or such a you know implication, what the implications would be. Thank you. 
Thank you. And uh, Leah? Yes, hi. Um, I would like to get some clarity to this option of withdraw um, the petition. Um, I, if, if the petitioner has the right to withdraw, um, I kind of agree with Mike. Um, I remember the last discussion on this topic, there was a discussion about even changing the article to establishing a committee to study this. Um, well, I don't think anything prevents the select board to do that outside of the, um, the article and on their own initiative. So, so if we have a situation that the petitioner wants to withdraw and yet there was a discussion about having an article that would look differently, um, I, I, I don't see much point keeping it uh, on the ballot. Yeah, Leah, the one problem with that is once the petition has been handed over, the petitioner does not have the power to withdraw their petition. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Yep. All right. Uh, Jess, you had your hand raised before, but it, you lowered it again. Did you have any comments? Kind of. Um, only a sort of, um, I think it was relevant, more relevant at the time, but only to say that this, this is only for the retail piece. If somebody wanted to, to grow and become, you know, an, an agricultural grower of cannabis, that's a whole different process. And they could still start that process in this upcoming year. So just so people understand what we're talking about, this is just the, the retail bricks and mortar store, um, at least with the article 10. So. Thank you. Okay, and Evan. You're muted still. Uh, you're, you're, you're unmuted, but I'm not hearing you. Hello? Yep, hearing you now. Okay. Even though the petitioner can't withdraw the petition themselves, um, can't the select board select the wishes of the petitioner? If they're wishing to have it removed, you guys could. Being that they didn't have to have signatures, it was a single point person of wanting the petition. If that single person wants it removed, I think the select board should honor those wishes and remove it on the ballot. It's a good conversation topic for next year. I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying respect the wishes of the person. It's a very unusual situation this year because we didn't request signatures and we said that we would honor it if there weren't signatures, there, there are no signatures on it. Um, I understand that. I guess I'm just saying you honored it, uh, but being that it's not what the petitioner wants now, you should also honor that as well. well it didn't end up being what they wanted. If we're honoring it as a petition, we have to take it away from, it's not just, if it was a regular petition, we wouldn't have the option of rejecting it. The only reason that we have any options this year are because we had said that, you know, you didn't need to collect signatures, but if you did collect signatures, we wouldn't have those options. Uh, so it's, it's an unusual year, so we have options that would not normally be available to us. But if we use them, we're doing away with the idea that we were going to honor it as a petition. And, and so that's a, a, an important step that the board has to consider before the, they decide to, to do, are they really going to treat it like a petition or not? And we, we said we would. Um, and if we're treating it like a petition, it's not just Shane's petition. It belongs to the town at this point. It's been submitted. It's out of Shane's hands. It represents a significant minority in the town who would have supported this. And resting too much on 
the individual who put this forward, I mean, it, I think that th this could have collected enough signatures if it had gone out for them. If this had been a normal year, I think enough people would have signed it that it would have gotten on the ballot and we wouldn't have this choice. We only have this choice because we said that you didn't need to get signatures. So we're really kind of undermining our own word if we say you don't need to get signatures and then we use that fact to undo it. Right. Even though I, I, I think it's very dissatisfying because Shane and, and, and the board don't really like it. Uh, that we don't really want this uh, to go out this way. Okay. Yeah, we have a loop loophole this year that normally we would never have. Anyone else? Uh, I think Mike's got a comment and then I've got another one from the audience. Okay. Brian, we go round and round and round on this uh, business. And like I said, in the first place, these are unusual times. And uh, because of that, and because the petitioner wants to withdraw it, again, I, I feel strongly that we should withdraw it. Granted, it does belong to the town, but the select board is the body of the town that was elected to make decisions for the town. And so I believe that we, in our fiduciary responsibility that we have and uh, the trust that has been given to us in matters such as this, uh, that we should have the ability to reject it uh, with the wishes of the petitioner, Shane Spence. The, the only way, Mike, that you, we can make that happen is you could make a motion to reject the petition on the grounds that it did not have the number of the 5% of the voters' signatures. Whether Shane wants it withdrawn or not is not a choice he has. The only choice you have and the board has is that requirement for 5% of the voters. Well, technically I'm the only one that could really make that motion anyway. Any board member could. No, uh, the other ones are falling in line by giving them uh, voting their word uh, on that. I, I voted against it. So probably technically, I would be the only one that could bring that forth. So I, I guess I see your point. Uh, you did, we didn't, the board did not require uh, the signatures. So you couldn't use that as an excuse. The, the board did not, it voted it would not, it would honor petitions without signatures, yes. Right. And technically we could use that against the petitioner right now. And if the majority of the board wanted to, to reject this petition because it didn't have the required number of signatures, even though we did agree we would honor it. Okay. <laughs> I'll make the motion because uh, the, uh, the amount of signatures uh, were, were not given in a timely manner. Well, there is a motion from Mike uh, that we're not the required number of signatures on the petition when it came in to reject the petition. Is there a second from any board member? Lacking a second, the motion will die. The motion well, uh, dies. Uh, Nat, did you have? A... I still want to second that. All right, I'll just second it. This is going to be the easy part of the meeting, by the way. It's just getting harder from here. So <laughs> we'll I seconded it. Okay, we have a motion and a second to reject the uh, petition as presented because of the lack of the 5% of the signatures. Is there any further board discussion before we open it up to the public? I'm not seeing any. 
Well, I'd like to say something. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, I'm on the opposite side of this. Uh, I think that uh, we could be a stop by a member of the public. Shane is not a stakeholder on this. Once he turns this in, it's beyond his control. And I think that uh, what people should do if they dislike this, uh, which I think that the majority of the board does, is that we would vote against it. You know, that I think is our choice. I think going back on our word, the idea that, that Shane can bargain this away is ludicrous. And I do not see this as have Shane being able to bargain this away. This is a decision of the board simply on the grounds that it does not have the required 5% of the voters on the petition. If there's no further board comments, we can open it up to the public again. All right, Rick, I see your hand. Go ahead and unmute. And uh, Evan, your hand is still up. Do you have another comment or? No, okay. So I'm gonna take care of that. And uh, Rick, go ahead. Thank you, Brian. Um, so I was in and out of the conversation. I was having connection problems, but uh, I, I think I heard maybe that you uh, requested legal counsel on this. And if you could restate what your lawyer's interpretation of this was, uh, that would help me a little bit. And I do agree with what Doug said, which is that uh, if you don't like the wording of it, then uh, to, uh, to try to somehow vote it down. But um, I just wanted to hear what the lawyer had to say. Thank you. Uh, the lawyer said that if we're, it, we should make minimal changes, the, the changes required to alter it to a, uh, a study committee was making a significant change, which we would not be able to do if this was a valid petition. So if we're treating this as a valid petition, that's outside of our scope and outside of our authority. Um, again, because this is kind of an odd year under odd circumstances, we technically could treat this as an invalid petition. That it has its own pitfalls because of the, you know, the, the integrity of the board and our ability to govern uh, relies on us following through and, you know, that what we say matters. Um, so that, that's the, the dilemma we're, we're stuck in. The other advice from the attorney was uh, about that retail license and an integrated license were not the same thing. So they should really be two separate questions. Uh, it has been raised tonight that we may have a misunderstand, somebody has a misunderstanding about integrated licenses and whether that applies to us or not. Uh, so that might get struck entirely if we find out otherwise. But right now the advice is split into two for the two types of licenses and keep it. All right, uh, Shane, I see your hand. Uh, thanks, Brian. Um, at the risk of giving people whiplash, um, I, I did ask for you to withdraw it, but I would caution against uh, rejecting it based on these grounds because it would make it very difficult to approve any of the other ballot questions that have been brought forward in the same process. And uh, you know, I think it is important that you guys made the process easier this year, and I, I would not want you to go back on your word. So thank you. Thank you, Shane. And it looks like we've got a comment from our esteemed town moderator, Dave Williams. Uh, you'll have to unmute Dave, there you go. I just, I just did. Um, <clears throat> Brian, I think you're, you're correct in your assertion that, uh, you know, the, the select board told this petitioner that indeed all the other people who might have filed petitions, that they didn't have to, uh, they didn't have to get signatures and uh, to, uh, you'd really be contradicting yourself and I think letting yourself in for a, a substantial amount of well justified criticism if you, you know, today decide that, oh, you're going to impose a signature requirement to some period of time after the opportunity for getting those signatures has expired. 
Um, I think there, however, there is a, seems to be a consensus uh, that at least I haven't heard anybody yet say that they really would like to pass either one of these articles. And if the petitioner uh, himself at both informational meetings and in a, in a very public way stated that uh, he wanted this voted down so it could be uh, looked at through uh, a clearer lens in the year to come, um, I think it's highly likely that uh, those two articles would be defeated. Thank you, What's Dave, that? for your words of wisdom. And in a normal town meeting setting, those words would carry a lot of weight and have a lot of influence. Oh. Yeah, just, and uh, uh, go ahead, Kyle. Sorry, I just I mean this is this is why I I asked again for clarification, I think two meetings ago when I said, Eric, is this your interpretation of how we're gonna move forward with petitions that they don't require signatures, that unless it's completely outlandish or hateful, they're going to be added to the warning. So um I know for myself, I feel like that would be a, a real, you know, and you agreed and um, that that would be a real, yeah, um, very hypocritical of of us at this point. And I I I feel like yeah, the work now is we you know we approve this. The work is for Shane and whomever else to to you know convince folks to vote it down if they're not comfortable with it, and that we should put that that you know we should uphold democracy on our end and trust that the voters will do what they feel is is best you know with their vote use their vote as their voice so that's where i stand on it okay is the board board prepared to uh, hear the question if so all those in favor of rejecting the petition as it was presented signify by saying aye. Hearing none, all those opposed? Nay. 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 Okay. The, uh, the articles will stand as presented. 10 and 11. Okay. Moves us on to 12. And we'll, we'll get a little bit more detail on, I'll double check the integrated licenses and uh, I have a final answer for that before this goes to print. Uh, so we'll put that in with the board's motion on, on approving the, the ballot pending a, a, an well, affirmation of Article 11. This meeting, we will need to approve the warning. So if there's any changes, we'll need, we're, it'll require a special select board meeting. I suppose we could approve it, and if integrated license is the worst it does, is it doesn't apply to us. But why would you think the attorney would have a different opinion than before? If his misunderstanding of what an integrated license means is the same as mine. I know that through conversation, the attorney and I have the same view on what an integrated license means. I'm not an expert on that. So, okay. you know, just suggested that it means something different. Shane concurs. Not having the attorney here and kind of having to rely on my personal interpretation of it, I'm not as confident on my personal knowledge about uh, exactly what an integrated license means. I, I just expect at some point tonight we will approve some wording of some kind of a warning. Yeah. And uh, if there is any substantial change. Yeah, the worst case scenario, if we leave it in, and an integrated license doesn't apply to us, then simply an integrated license doesn't apply to us. And we'll have and to have so, a special select board meeting to take that question out. Yeah. Okay, uh, the merger question, Article 12. Uh, I think Mike's got one more oh. question on, on Article 11. Go, uh, go ahead, Mike. Doug and David, uh, you had very uh, compelling uh, points and reasoning uh, this evening, and thank you very much. And Mike, you got some free legal advice. I know, I yeah, love two it. Two attorneys working together. <laughs> All okay. right, Article 12 as written, 
Uh, shall the select board work with the village of Johnson trustees to create a merger plan? Uh, and I believe that we've got a request on changing the wording on this. Yeah, and this is an article that the select board is bringing forward on its own authority. So we can change the wording of this one yeah. and are well within our right to do so. And I think Doug had a proposed changing. I, I had given that to uh, Brian. I think he has it written down now or I can I look for my notes. Okay. Give me just a second. <clears throat> The language I have is shall the select board enter into discussion with the village of Johnson trustees with regard to a possible merger of the town and village. Can you read that one more time, Brian. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, shall the select board uh, tell the select board into a discussion with the village of Johnson trustees. with regard to a possible merger of the town and village. So this would, it would appear the same up to uh, trustees. And then after trustees, it would change to, uh, to a possible merger of the town and village. Mm, that's not accurate. No. It's, it, it starts before that. Shall oh, no, you're, it's, Shall the select board enter into discussions with the village of Johnson trustees? Can you change that on the fly? Not here, but I can put this in okay. a Word document so that we can read it. Oh, we're waiting for that. Are we, we are definitely putting the merger study in the town report question. Uh, as I understand it, yes. Okay, I think that's gonna be super important. Have we received it yet, the final from the consultant? Yes. Okay, good, thank you. And would we, I don't know if we should consult with the trustees before we do this, but um, put that merger study on our website. It seems like with five weeks until town meeting, we should, uh, the town meeting vote, we should get that out to the voters as soon as we can. Uh, I think I'm fine putting it up on, on the website. We've seen it and. And it's going in our town report. Yeah. Shall the select board enter into discussions with the village? Johnson trustees with regard to a possible merger of the town and village. Is that what you propose, Doug? Yep. Okay. If I can, if I can speak to it, the, the prior language uh, almost seemed to be directive and ignored the possibility of, of what seems to be the inevitable discovery of uh, and looking into the so we avoid uh, unintended consequences. I, I see this as a as a long process uh, that, uh, and we shouldn't be saying, you know, will we work with the trustees to enact, to affect a merger? Uh, so I think discussions are the way to go and possible merger. Any board comments? Preference over one versus the other? Yeah, I, I, I think I do like this language better. I mean, it's my understanding that there's so many different types of mergers and ways in which we could go about this if we, <clears throat> if we choose to do that. So um, I like the word discuss and I like the word possible <laughs> because I think there's just, um, there's gonna, there's gonna have to be uh, you know, a lot of that to even to even be able to figure out, um, you know, uh, to, to even really look at all the different options um, 
that are possible to us. So I feel okay, let, me, let me ask it this another way. Is there anyone who does not like this language of, of the proposed by Doug? And is there a full board consent on putting this into the warning? Yes. Okay. Uh, if I'll open it up to any comments from the board. If there is none, then we can open it up to any comments from the public. I'm not seeing any. Uh, I do see Kim has got a question. Okay. Okay, you'll have to unmute Kim. Yeah, I'm just wondering if one idea might be to put a front porch forum post that talks about um, this, uh, or maybe not even put this, but ultimately gives us a link to that information so that um, we can click on it and get that, um, the merger information in front of us. Yep. I, I think that would go along with, go. I think it'd be good to do in conjunction with putting on our website is make people know uh, known that it's on our website. I don't think uh, only we will check our website all that regularly. So thank you. All right. And uh, Diana. Okay, go ahead, Diana. Um, I'm just speaking as somebody who um, if I saw this come up on the articles, I would think, well, gosh, how is this different from that thing we voted for not that long ago to look into a merger between the village and the town? Um, I guess that I would like to know how what I'd already voted for fit in with what was going to be happening next. Yeah, Diana. Uh, good question, and that is something we're going to have to get out there, is the question you voted on before was the town and village hiring a consultant to look at all of the town and village departments and jobs and functions and everything and see if there was uh, reasons or, or room uh, to, you know, realize savings or the benefits and the, and the the pros and cons of merger or not. That report from the consultant has been completed. That will be in our town report. With the knowledge of the consultant's report, we're asking the voters with that knowledge, read the report. Do you still think that you want the select board to enter into those discussions with the trustees on a possible merger? There still would be another question that comes before the town and the village voters when we've completed this work, if the voters ask us to go forward with actually, do you want to merge or not? This is still not you know, the last vote on whether we merge or not. So I hope that helps. The first question was just on the consultant, hiring a consultant. To do a study mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. But Diana, yeah. that's, a, that's a good, yeah. I, I, to be honest with you, when I first read it too, I had to kind of figure this out in my brain as well, but so maybe could, would it be prudent to add um, what you said, Eric, uh, with the, um, what did you say? Something like with the, with the knowledge of, or with the um, intern discussion with the, in regard, something about now that we have the report or with the knowledge of the report, something like that. So it's so it sounds like this is okay. We've got the report now. This is the next step. Now we enter into discussions with, with the knowledge from the report. If we had the luxury of town meeting, I think we could do that. We could refer to the town report, and with the the consultant's report within. Uh, the concern I would get is if we added it into the language of the. Uh, article here in the warning, it could be seen as a pre prejudicial in that we're mm -hmm. trying to get people to vote a certain way, but maybe not. If, I don't know. I don't know that answer. Even though the report, the study was third party and was not. I, I, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. On this is 
we believe that it's neutral and that it's a, a good, fair assessment, but that's our belief. That isn't, mm -hmm. yeah, there's no way to have something empirical that points to and says that this is, you know, just strictly the facts about this. So uh, we, it is leading and prejudicial uh, to point people at a particular thing. Um, Hmm. I'll read this before you vote on this question. Uh, yeah, I think that's prejudicial. Eric? Mike? We have the study done, correct? Yes. Yep. So the whole point was to have this study done, get it into the hands of the voters, for them to digest it and make a decision, shall the town merge with the village? <clears throat> that's it. Everybody needs to be informed and the question should be simple. Shall the town merge with the village? Period. Uh, any further board comments and then we can open it up. I see Scott's got his hand up. Yeah. If not, why don't you let, open up to Scott. Okay, Scott, go ahead. Thanks, Brian. Uh, thanks, Eric. So, um, an email went out from Meredith after we talked a little bit about the wording. Uh, I've made it really clear that the village wants to have the same language for the village meeting as the town is going to be using. And she wordsmithed um, a sentence on this. And Brian, do you have that where you can just put it up on your little screen here and let people take a peek at it just for another variation of the same thought? Uh. Let me look. Is it dramatically different than what's up here now? My other computer is in use. I'm actually on another board meeting. <laughs> so I'm sort of <laughs> locked into that screen and jumping back and forth. So I don't have it with me. It, it's, it seems like the same intent, Eric. It just, when I read it this afternoon, it just seemed a little bit smoother for the language. Uh, I don't have a, another email from Meredith. The last email I got from her was uh, her signing off on, on this version. It was probably in the body before that, Brian, because I did see that come back too. All right, well, whatever. Okay, well, hopefully the language you guys put in your uh, warning will be very close or similar to this. Yeah, I think that's the goal between uh, both boards. Um, I'm just a little bit bummed out that um, the, the version that Meredith word crafted today is nowhere in sight for this meeting. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yep. No, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't believe that I've got a, a question from Meredith, a, a an alternate wording of the question from Meredith. Okay, I saw I saw it earlier today. I, I don't know why it's not showing up for you now. Anyway, if I can get into my other computer and dig it out, I'll forward it to you, Brian. It yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, I've got a question from Beth. Um, thanks, Brian. Uh, I agree with Kyle. I think if you're going to ask a question, you have to be really clear about why you're asking the question. And I would not interpret this question um, as a next step. I would interpret this question as the same question we already voted on. Um, so I personally would like some clarity in the question. Thanks. Okay, anyone else? I don't have anybody else from the public. So how can we, how can we create clarity without sounding partial? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, the, the report was an independent report. Right. Uh, and, and we worked really hard to make it an independent report. I don't, and, and the voters asked us to do it. Um, we didn't do it on our own. So I, I don't see how referring to it at the beginning by saying, having conducted a, an independent study of town village merger shall the select board continue discussion with village trustees on this, mm -hmm. something of that nature. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. I guess I'll look for Doug or Dave if they want to pipe in. I, I'm just, my reading and understanding is we have to be careful with that. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't go there. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I've got a couple more public comments. Hopefully, maybe some suggestions on wording. Okay. Okay, Rick, I've got you up next. Thank you, Brian. Um, well, um, I'm not um, an expert on legal things, but I don't think that uh, putting the wording in the statement, although I do support the public reading the consultant's report, I don't think that you can put wording in there that establishes a given that the public in general will have read the report before they vote. So although I support uh, the reading of the consultant's report, um, I'd be careful about uh, using wording about the report um, in the article. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Rick. And Beth, I've got you up next. Sorry if I've missed this, um, but I don't, I guess I'm curious why there needs to be a question that the voters need to vote on at this stage. Um, since both the select board and the village have been working on this for, you know, well, two years now. Um, is there a reason there needs to be a vote? Is it specifically about potentially acting on some of the items within the recommendation? Um, what is the purpose of the vote specifically? The uh, prior vote only gave the select board and the trustees the authority to hire a consultant to come back with this report. It did not authorize us to enter into any discussion. Okay, thanks. Is there any further comment for board members or public? Eric. Go ahead, Mike. Again, I'm gonna go right back to one of some of the stuff we had talked about in the first place was getting this report into the hands of every single person in the town and village. If I you lost will. something, are we gonna do that? Yes. This report will be in our town report and mailed to every single resident of the town of Johnson. Okay, fine. Like I'm saying, that's what we should have focused on. After they read the report, they should make the decision whether or not they want to merge with the village, period. Nothing prejudicial about that or nothing leading, just the question, Do, does the town want to merge with the village? Yes or no. I don't see how simple you're, that can get. Well, you're putting the cart ahead of the horse. And, no, because you know, they're getting the report at the same time, aren't they? The only re thing in that report is some of the benefits and pros and cons of, of a merger and what the functions of each uh, municipality's departments are. So you don't think in, in that all of that money that we spent that there's not enough information in there for the public to make an informed decision? I believe there's enough information in that report to inform the voters on do they want to proceed any further. Okay. All right. I maybe you know correct me if I'm wrong, but that's my understanding. Well, to me, it would give them a pretty good idea whether they want to move forward with any more discussion discussion, or just put it to bed and move on. And that's why we have this motion about entering into this discussion. Because I don't think it is that simple, Mike. I think that, that there's a lot of different ways that we could possibly merge, but we have to have a discussion about that to figure out what those possibilities are and then bring that to the voters. Okay. Right. So I'm still grappling with whether uh, 
I don't know. I feel like, you know, especially people are going to be getting their ballots mostly at home. They're going to have time to look at this report. And if we can just, I don't know, I, I still don't see the prejudicial nature of referring to the report that's in the town report. <laughs> when to, to create clarity and, and transparency here for this for this question. I'm, I'm struggling yes, with that. I'll, I'll go with the majority of the board. Um, I expressed my uh, reservations. Uh, I know Doug has expressed his reservations. Uh, up to the rest of you. Doug's reservations were that if we put, after reviewing the report, shall Patty. the village, to tell you the truth, I would like to see what the village had come up with. You know, uh, we're in the dark again. You know, we're trying to work in concert with the village uh, on this whole thing. And we don't even have what the village had discussed. Well, we are ahead of the village because their annual meetings a month behind us. I understand, but uh, we were talking about uh, some of the stuff that Meredith had put forth and that we should have had for this evening, uh, according to Scott. And I think from Scott's, uh, he thought this wording was very close to what she had but he, he didn't know for exact wording of it. I know, but this, again, this is kind of shoddy for lack of a better term. Well, we have what we have in front of us is yeah. the board. I'm looking for board comfort level on putting this in the warning or changing the wording. You happy with this, Doug? Yes, I am. Um, you know, I, I recognize that, uh, you know, we had a consultant's report. People will read the consultant's report, and, uh, but I don't think we can direct them to that. They may have their own experience. I, I just think that uh, the limitations of the forms are, of the form of this Australian ballot limits us to this. We, we don't get to add other information. Yeah. All right, let's go with it. Yeah, move on. Okay, I'm hearing a majority in consensus to go with what's presented before us right now. Okay. I would have I would have liked to have the report in there, but that's that's me. Okay, so noted. I agree with you, Kyle. But what are we going to do? I and think we're in the minority. The the final petition that was handed in, uh, there were, it sort of had four or five different uh, questions to it. This is also a non-binding uh, petition or an article. And there was some, uh, we had the last meeting tried to change the wording and we also got word from our attorney that that was not allowable. It has to be put in as presented with, you know, minor tweaking of adding a word or subtracting a word here or there. Uh, Brian, you got any further thing you wanted to add to that? Just that what's presented here is kind of reasonable, minimal changes, but articles 13 and 14 Well, Article 13 ha has, let's take them one at a time. Article 13 has a problem because suspend is not a power that's granted to the select board. The select board cannot suspend anything. Um, so the action requested by this is not a power given to the select board. So there, there's a, a fundamental problem with it. Uh, we can look at rewording it there are some suggestions about rewording it, but I think that changes made to this would no longer be uh, minimal changes. 
I think there would be significant changes to the nature of the uh, the article. Ryan, I, I'm trying to remember. I thought this article had like A, B, C. It did. So what happened to that? Uh, we took that out in our recommendation because we thought that a lot of that was prejudicial language. Um, give me a moment to pull that up as well. But we had believed that that was uh, prejudicial language. And that, when you say we, who are you talking about? Uh, that was the select board's decision that night was to change the question by taking out a portion of the the language that we thought was prejudicial. But you and had submit this... to the attorney with what we felt were minimal changes. Okay. Uh, the attorney came back with those are minimal changes, but the requested action is also not something that's granted to the select board that the requested action is to suspend. So we we can't suspend. Uh, we could go back and change the requested action to amend. But if we change the requested action to amend, we need to come up with what the um, requested amendments are. And that's not easy to do from the list of options that were presented with the original question. And at that point, we're making significant changes to it. We've changed the requested action. We've changed the, uh, uh, the we've now added amendments and we've created what those amendments are. Um, so it, it's, it's not impossible, but I, I think it gets, I think it would require significant changes. Uh, and I'm going to try and pull up the original. Okay. All right, Kylie, do you want you had said you wanted to see the original, so yeah, I'm just pull that up. So that is uh, question one on the form that's on your screen right now. Uh, you mean two? Sorry, yes, that's question two. No, this was not the latest. Sorry, this was not the latest version. Give me a. This was an update. Who made this update? Uh, this was an update from that Kirsten had sent me. So when I was pulling. We have to go back to the original petition as yeah, we do. I'm, I'm, I've got that now. Okay. So the one on your screen should now, the heading at the top is petition of legal voters. So this is what, okay. This is before it went to our lawyer. It's passed. Yes. Uh, and it does in front of, on your screen at the top say petition of legal voters? Yes. Okay, good. Are we the undersigned legal voters of the town of Johnson here petition? Yep, mm -hmm. that's the right one. So this is the, this is the original. And oh. right now we're talking about what appears here as question one. Right. Uh, and appears on ours as, was it article 13? Yeah, article 13. So the attorney saw this? Yes. And the attorney felt you could. The attorney saw this, and the attorney also saw our shortened version, mm -hmm. which uh, I believe a shortened version was cut off here. We had removed ad, or I think he removed ad hoc committee. Um,
but you can kind of see the questions really, it's saying suspend and while it's suspended, do these other things. So in theory, the action requested could be changed to amend if you can make amendments out of this list. Uh, but at that point, it's not asking for specific amendments. You know, it's saying we should set penalties for ordinance violations, that we should establish regulations. Um, so it's really asking us to uh, look at the question over again. So I didn't feel like we could really pull specific amendments out of this uh, that we could include because the language need to be clear, specific and rooted in the original petition. My take on this is that uh, the language about suspending it is, which we don't have the power to do, uh, means that this, this is not properly includable because uh, you can't suspend. Even if, we, even if we went on to amend or do other things, you still lack the ability to suspend. And those are, those are complementary parts of the concept of this. Yeah. So Brian, you're saying we could change to spend out for amend, and then we need to just suss out the specifics of the like amend da 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 um, speed limits, noise limits, days and times of allowable ATV use. That would make the language that would make the language fit, but at that point, is it? Are we still making minimal changes or are we making substantive changes to the petition question? And I'm, my feeling on, on this is that we can't, I don't think we can thread that needle, but that's the board's decision of, are you comfortable with it? Do you think that you can make minimal changes when you have to change the requested action and after you've changed the requested action, you've got to elaborate on what that new action is. So let me uh, poll the board on this question one. On do you think that we could change this to a format that would be in proper form without significantly changing what was actually presented? And uh, I'm just going to poll each member, Mike. So I, I'd like to have uh, as much of the attorney uh, that uh, Brian can share, uh, even the last portion uh, of that attorney's uh, reading, if that's possible, before we go any further. Which, what last reading? What are you? Well, we, we have uh, uh, some uh, correspondence from our attorney. How much can we share? Uh, in this open meeting here about uh, what we can what we can and cannot do to this petition brian you want to share the discussion with the the attorney sure um i the, the I, I mike you're gonna have to remind me about some of the specifics but the, the general gist of it was that we can we can make changes to petitions but our changes should not change the intent of the question, which was our big one that we got with when we were talking about the cannabis legislation. And the second being that we shouldn't make substantive changes. And when we look at this question, I don't think, because it uses, because there's some leading language in here and it uses suspend as the requested action I think between those two, we can't do both. We can't make minimal changes to the, the body and the intent of the question while also making it fit 
legal requirements. Um, Brian, before I go any further, can you read the last paragraph? Of what? What the attorneys have told us. I'm, I've got a few different emails, so I'm going to go back. You want the most recent one that I sent you, Mike? I, be, I believe so, yeah. The one that uh, the last paragraph tells him tells us what we can do. Uh, the, my, my last was, well, it was, you know, what was that, uh, the ATB question doesn't really matter that it was submitted with problems because we could fix those problems without substantially changing the questions. Uh, these are the questions still ask the same thing that it did when Kirsten first submitted it. Uh, and that was what we, that was what we sent him. I wish I'd printed it. The problem is I don't know what I can say and what I can't say in a public meeting with this privilege, this so-called privileged information that the attorney sent us. Uh, are you thinking the an alternative for the ATV question that is permitted for us is to reject the petition altogether uh, because we feel too many changes need to be made to it for it to be allowed to be printed on the ballot? That's correct. Okay, yes. Uh, because we had to make changes, or we would have to make changes to every question, we could the board could reject this if they felt that uh, these were altogether too many substantive changes. Um, the, the major substantive changes as I see it is uh, first and second question, but you could reject all of it because of the changes required. Well, I think the petitioner had more than enough time to craft a proper petition. I think the select board has no business doing major rewrites uh, to somebody else's uh, petition. And I think we should reject the whole thing. Yeah. I guess some of the trouble I see is, uh, I mean, there, there's no question this is a very poorly presented written uh, petition that was sent in. Uh, Brian and the board has done way more and in, in legal expense looking at this particular petition than we ever would have with anyone else. And, and uh, you know, I don't think that's, it's not the town's responsibility to write the uh, petition for someone who, uh, wants to submit a petition, it's really the petitioner's responsibility and we assist, but we, we've gotten ourselves into where we're totally rewriting the whole thing and that's not our job. Nat? Yes, we, 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 we I think that we do need to um, reject the peti petition altogether because too much substantive changes would be required to put it on the ballot. Um, however, um, it's really clear that there's a significant part of the community that's asking us to make changes to um, ATV regulations in Johnson. Half of them or some portion of them want us to expand access. Some portion of them want to reduce access. This is a conversation that the community is really asking to have. Um, whether we replace it with a question or questions that the board believes is appropriate, something around, do you feel like there should be 
more regulation on ATVs and Johnson or not, something simple like that is something we could do. If we choose not to do it, it's going to come back to us next March after another year of frustration and, and, and discord among, among neighbors. Um, it will be rewritten and it will be with signatures and it will be um, presentable in petition form. I have no doubt about that. Um, I don't think any of us do. Um, so I'm amenable to putting something on the ballot this year along those lines of shall we have um, some changes to the ordinance more or less restrictive. Um, however, it is, it is regardless of what we do, it's gonna be advisory. Um, and I'm gonna be very reluctant to um, make any changes to this until there's been some sort of effort put into getting people together who have different views and talking about these things directly with each other. Um, and that's really what's gonna happen, need to happen before any ordinance changes are made. Um, I, I think, you know, Jen Burton had a really, a really good um, letter, a really good post on Front Porch Forum today, just about, you know, <laughs> this could be a, a, an issue that just creates further discord in the community and more upset and more friction and, and division. Um, or we can be good neighbors and sit down and talk to each other and, and, and try and work it out. So, um, and I was, I was actually thinking like maybe on uh, the green up day, all of the people who, uh, have ATVs should get together and invite some of the people here who show up and don't like ATVs and the two of then small groups of people with different views can go out and pick up trash on green up day and start to create relationships with each other and talk to each other about these things instead of um, getting the select board um, to uh, to, to step in and, and we're just gonna piss everybody off. I mean, if you've noticed what's been going on through the meeting so far. <laughs> so um, I, I just, I really encourage whatever happens tonight, whatever we do on the ballot through the spring and summer, people need to get together and talk to each other about these issues and, and talk you know about what your concerns are. And, and um, I think there are, by and large, we're all reasonable people here with good intentions. I went on for a while, so thanks for listening. You did a Thank good you. job, Nat. Thank you, Nat. And, yeah. Well, and and you know, we're not able to get out and talk to each other right now, unfortunately. Um, in you know, that's true. Physical that, that's way, right now. So that I think that makes this process harder. Of course, um, it's 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 a tough communication time. <laughs> um, it is, Kyle, it, it, and, but also it's winter, so there are not a lot of ATVs right at the moment, but it is, and I think hopefully there's a light at the end of the tunnel here and we'll be getting through this COVID thing and it'll be easier for us to talk to each other. So sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I of course agree that um, we're, you know, we, we all live in this community and we do need to, no one's going away, you know? Um, and so communication and trying to find trying to find a place that we can everyone can live with, whether you're uh, an ATV rider or or not, is is super important. Um, but I just want to sort of bring it back to what's before us right now, which was again sort of this commitment to to like we talked about with with the cannabis um, petition that we you know we committed as a board to to include, you know, any petition questions that came to us um, that were not outlandish and that at our last meeting, we, we did do a lot of, of this changing work. So for me, it feels like bailing on it now just feels um, bizarre. Like I think we're in, we're doing it and we should just, we should, we should figure out a way to, to keep to, to keep our word. Um, and maybe that means for Article 13, we take suspend away and put amend. Um, something simple like that with, um, 
we haven't really gotten to 14 yet, Brian, with, with what, what's not working there. This is, I thought this was what the attorney said could be, could be put on the ballot. Um, so I, I kind of, I feel like we need to, I feel like I, I wanna continue to commit to making this work um, on the ballot because we said we would. Anyone else? Yeah, um, I think that um, I would start out that uh, the petition says that uh, she want, she was to submit following articles, one, two, three, four. So I think they need to be treated as separate articles and not as a, and not as individual. I mean, and not as a, as a, a, a group. Um, and I think that uh, suspend has a relatively clear word and it doesn't meet a meaning and it doesn't mean amend. Uh, and it's a process that we can't do under Article 13. I think that Article 14 is clearly uh, improvident and beyond our ability. I think that Articles 15 and 16 uh, have been wordsmithed with minor changes and ought to stay. Um, and that's what I think would be true to, to our, our, our duty, uh, not to propose, uh, not to change too much, not to propose things that are totally beyond uh, what we couldn't make an ordinance, which is Article 14. And 15 and 16, I, I think, are, are properly worded articles that uh, our, our public would, uh, would disagree substantial on. I think uh, this ought to, these are advisory, and I think the select board, uh, which will not include me, needs to address this. Uh, you know, if we can't suspend, which we can't, and uh, if, if it's repealed or whether it's not repealed, the issue needs to be addressed. You need to talk, do what Nat is talking about, and you need to open up the communication and need to look at the, at the uh, ordinance. Okay, anyone else? Uh, That's reasonable to me, Doug. I think going with 15 and 16 is uh, within the spirit of what we agreed to do. Um, without doing any putting anything on the ballot that's illegal. Any further comments from board members or are we prepared to open it up to the public? I still um, say it's a major change, Mr. Chairman. Duly noted. Uh, just uh, something that Nat pointed out. Uh, I think this is non-binding advisory only so no matter how the voters, uh, the vote comes out, it would be uh, nothing binding on the select board. I would just uh, remind the select board that we've already uh, committed to allowing ATVs on a trial basis this next season into the village. And uh, depending on the outcome of that, we would be uh, going into the ATV ordinance. Once we go into that ATV ordinance, that is a vote that the voters petition, they will have a say and it will be ultimately their say on whether ATVs are allowed to expand the region of their travels or if they lose their ability to travel in Johnson. So ultimately the voters will have a say you know, fall time frame or sometime after the season. And that will be the vote that really counts. This vote is uh, simply a non-binding vote anyhow. But uh, I just did want to uh, remind the board that we had already committed to that after last year's town meeting when the voters asked us to open up the village for access to ATVs. So with that, Brian, why don't you open it up to the public? All right, I've got a few public comments. Uh, 
All right, Michelle, I've got you up first. Uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. What's Michelle's last name? French. French. Hi, Michelle. Hi. So this might be a little long-winded, but please be patient with me. I am an avid ATV rider. I lived here my whole life and, and my family, my father down to my granddaughter and like, that's what we do. We get out in the woods. We enjoy getting out into nature and it's a different perspective. And to anyone that questions it, I ask them to just take a ride one time and see what you can see. That's my personal perspective. As a taxpayer, I'm asking how much have we spent to try to remodify this article that was presented? It was clearly not presented the right way because there's so many questions. So how much taxpayer dollars have been spent in lawyer fees to advise us how to do it when there was plenty of time to figure out how to do it the correct way? So as a taxpayer, that's where I'm coming from. It's just frustrating that the people that judge this are judging a, a minority of what's going on and the minority of the people that ride ATVs. My father's almost 80. He enjoys riding. My granddaughter is not even a year, year old and her biggest smiles come from riding with my father plowing snow. You can get out into nature. You can enjoy it in a way that's, that's to people that don't know what they're experiencing. They, you, you don't know. You can judge the sound of the exhaust. You can judge everything. But my problem is this article was brought to the board and it was clearly not worded correctly because I've listened to the last two meetings and everyone is thinking about how can we reword this to make it right? You've had ample time to word it correctly. Why are we wasting so much time and money helping someone word something that may or may not be the general consensus of everyone? And that that's kind of my view. Thank you, Michelle. You're welcome. Eric, I just have a question. Um, are we are we talking about the merits of the of the article, or are we talking about the wording of it? We should be uh, both holding our discussion to why this or how this article sh or petition should be put into an article. And as far as yeah. the merits of ATVs or not, that's really not uh, appropriate for this discussion. I touched on both. Yes, you did. And, and okay. thank you, Michelle. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, moving on, Kirsten, I've got you up next. You'll have to unmute yourself. Hi, Brian. Thank you. I, um, I'm just questioning the second question, which it's not showing up on my screen as what number article it is that it's showing up on your screen, Brian. So um, it's uh, the second question after the first one. So basically, do you understand what which one I'm talking about? Yeah, let me, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen again. Thank you. So this was, shall the select board amend the ordinance regulating ATV to provide a mechanism by which a resident may request that an ATV use be restricted or prohibited on any town highway adjacent to which the resident owns an abutting property, uh, including for reasons of nuisance or adverse effect on business and or property values. Right. Um, so I realize that this there's too much language in this question. I think that uh, it could be easily simplified, but I do think that it's very important that there's a question that addresses what the town will do if ATVs are negatively impacting your use and enjoyment of your property and your business. And this has been done in other towns in Vermont. So I know that 
perhaps you guys don't think it is legal, but it it is something that can be addressed. And I'd like to ask the board why you're skipping over it so readily. Thank you very much. Uh, I think tonight we just hadn't gotten to it yet. I, I think that we had really just still gotten hung up on, on the first question. Um, there um, okay. is a framework provided uh, by the attorney in what's uh, on your screen right now. Um, that alters it a little bit from what you were saying, but I do think it retains the uh, original intent. Uh, my feeling on this is that it is a, a, a it would it's a I mean, you, you said uh, Pownal or, or another town had done something like this, but I think this is a a significant departure from what the select board normally seeds to individuals, uh, that this would be a very unusual step to take. Right, well, yes, I understand maybe it would be unusual, but it has been done. And I just think it would be great if the town had a procedure for dealing with such things as this, as perhaps as removing a road from allowable town roads for ATV use, if that use is negatively impacting a resident of that road. Uh, you know, so that's, those are my thoughts. And I just think, shouldn't anyone whose home or business is bothered by this, this problem, or the, by, by, by having 40 or more ATVs going by on the weekend on days on the weekend 40 or more like it's very difficult so the the town of Pownall did it and i'm suggesting that we look at this please thank you very much thank you thank you kristen yeah my feeling and concern about that is uh you know, one example would be, what do we do if two, if neighbors didn't agree? Uh, we'd have to have a mechanism for how to establish if one neighbor wanted ATVs and another neighbor didn't, you know, they could be across the street from each other and have a piece of property that uh, they both have to deal with. So I, I think that it's unusual and not uh, an impossible thing to do, but difficult. Um, but it, it is you know, up to the board if that's included or not. Uh, okay, uh, moving on. Ken, I've got you up next. Okay, Ken. Thanks. Uh, basically, you just, you said that the lawyer said any changes that are substantial to this petition, you can't do. And that means basically you guys got to reject this petition. It's pretty much that simple. Uh, the wording was all wrong. You know, it's, you can't make any changes to this petition by just eliminating one article because it's not a four article petition. It's a single petition with different phrases. So, you know, it's, it's basically Basically, you're doing too much changes again, and that's what your lawyer basically told you, you shouldn't do. So I feel that the board should just go ahead, vote against this, and as speaking for the local club, and Christian knows me, I think we ought to try to do something a total different route, as Nate was saying. Get together, talk about it, try to work something out. Our club's been here for 16 years. Uh, this is a first issue ever. And it's gone to extreme. You know, that's what the problem is. We don't want any more division in this town. We're good people. Nate's idea about Green Up Day was awesome. You know, we do it every year. I think Shane Spence can testify to last year. I think that was his first year doing it. I don't know, but we went to the town clerks the year before and got the bags. We do this in every town in the Moyle County besides Stowe, Elmore, and a couple others. We'll cut it because we're not in them areas. Uh, basically, you should vote no against this right now. 
just have a town discussion in a different format. And that's about it. Thanks. Thank you all for doing what you're doing. Thank you, Ken. Just a, a point of clarification, if I might. The, the, the lawyer did say that we have the option of replacing a question with a question or questions that the board feels is appropriate. So we are within our legal authority to replace the question with questions that we feel is appropriate. All right, uh, Doug Collins. Okay, you'll have to unmute, Doug. Yeah, uh, I think you guys are looking at legal actions if you uh, try and change this the way you're trying to. Uh, I think you need to reject it and go with what you passed the last meeting that was actually there. That's that's what I've got. Thank you, Doug. All right, Spencer. Um, yes, uh, I'm actually the vice president of the Green Mountain ATV Riders Club. And I'm just uh, also, uh, I believe that the petition, um, and first off, me as a writer, and um, I've lived in Johnson now a couple of years, and uh, I really enjoy the town. and. Uh, I think uh, ATV riding is great and it can help build our community. Um, I'm not trying to get in the merits too much, but I think the petition, I think we're trying to reward it um, to the extreme, which like I'm kind of new to all this stuff. It seems like it's kind of getting, that's not, shouldn't be allowed. Um, but also as an ATV rider, we want to try to make the community happy and get along with people. And like Ken was saying, we're willing to work with, you know, the taxpayers who own land because essentially we want to use land if that's possible. We, we don't want to argue with people, you know, we want to get along. And like uh, you mentioned earlier, the green update with ATV riders and non ATV riders, you know, like that's a great idea. We're about giving back to com the community. Um, we do donations and so. That's just, uh, that's a huge thing for us. We love to ride and like, uh, I think it was uh, Michelle or Mickey was saying earlier, you know, if you haven't done it, get out and try to do it. I think you'd be surprised, enjoy mother nature. And yeah, that's about all I got to say. Thank you, Spencer. All right, Diana. Are you there, Diana? Yes. It looks like you're unmuted. My, um, there we go. Okay, um, good. Yep. Yeah. Um, I wanted to address Article 4, 14 first about this mechanism for people to, um, um, you know, request that the ATV use be restricted. It's not, not that they're requesting they used to be restricted, but that a mechanism be provided, you know? And that's what I see at the root of this all. It's like, right now we're in a situation where we already have an ordinance. There's already extensive state statutes about what's allowed and what's not allowed. And there's already a problem. Um, and so what's missing is an individual's recourse to do something if there's a problem. And article 14 seems like a really essential one to to still keep in here to me because all it's saying is that um, there needs to be a mechanism by which a resident can do something. And that's what I see happening here is that, you know, residents are, are trying to work with the select board um, to at least have you um, enforce the ordinance that already exists when we see things happening that you know, maybe are just a few bad apples or whatever you want to say. You know, I, I, I know that not every ATV rider is in the wrong, but the problem is, is that when something does happen in the wrong, right now, people don't have any recourse. There's, there's not a lot that can, that can happen. And I think it's really, really sad that when somebody tries to do something to correct a situation that's having a severe negative impact on them, that 
you would set aside the entire petition on, you know, language preferences. I think that um, it's it's super important that people have an ability to bring their concerns to the select board and not have their concerns set aside just because of, you know, the choice of a word here and there. Um, so when it comes to Article 14, you know, what you're doing is providing a mechanism. Um, and the other articles, I think, give you important feedback. And, you know, it's just advisory only. Why not just put it out there as it is um, and see where people come in on it? And, you know, it gives you information. And so, so what if people pass something saying to suspend an ordinance and you don't have the power to suspend, you might find out that, you know, 88% of the people don't want you to even consider that option. And that's important information for you. So um, I, would, I would encourage you strongly to think twice about rejecting a petition. Um, I mean, right now in the, the, the town ordinance, it says that the select board may list specific unpaved class three and class four roads where ATVs may be operated or not be operated. I mean, it's already in our ordinance that you guys can do that. And what I'm hearing is that there's certain residents in town that are asking you to do that. And instead, what it's sounding like here is that that's being confused with like pro ATV or anti ATV altogether. And that's not really the issue. The issue is, you know, do citizens have a way to require the select board to address their concerns? So that's my opinion. Thanks. Thank you, Diana. Uh, Brian, hold off just a minute. Sure. I just want to uh, remind the board, we are about 45 minutes behind schedule. I realize there's quite a few number of hands that are up. We are on our last article. Does the board want to put a hard stop on how long we're going to let the discussion continue? And I guess I'm looking for input from the board. 11 o'clock. Oh, gee whiz, no way. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. Oh, all right. Let's, I mean, another 10 or 15 minutes on this. Okay. Questions, the hands that are raised. Is that a, uh, agreeable with the rest of the board? Another 10 minutes and then we'll uh, move on. How many hands are up? Uh, I've got six hands up. Let those six people speak. Is that the consent of the board? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll let those six people speak. All right. And Kim, I do see your hand, so you're you're all set. All right. Uh, Kirsten, I've got you up next. Kirsten. Sorry, could you hear, can you hear me? We yeah, can we hear you. Okay, I was just saying that um, it wasn't, it's not, I, I like the idea of, also I like the idea of um, having residents on that road, on that road, being able to use the road. And, and I'm just suggesting that, um, you know, not banning all ATVs on, ev on every road where someone doesn't, appreciate them but uh, because it's a lot of excess ATVs at the moment which is the difficult thing so I was just reiterating that they're coming from all over the place not there you know the the local is probably like something really we can work well together you know but it's just all the outsiders like so many of them and um anyways that's all i'm going to say for now i just wanted to say about having local residents on the road if the roads were closed to pe for people who didn't want to have them if it was local you know if we could work that way so i just wanted to suggest that thank you thank you very much thank you All right, Alan, I've got you up next. Uh, you'll have to unmute there. Do you hear me? Yep. Yes, we can. Ahead. Can you hear me, Brian? Yep. So, you know, I've lived here all my life and, um, you know, I hike, I hike up, you know, Natal's West Summit all the time. And 
I ride four wheelers too. And I think we all got to tolerate a little bit, you know, each other a little bit more. Um, I think you open up Pandora's bots. If you start saying one person can shut down a road, we may have five people on that road that like it. Um, you know, I've had, you know, I live by the rail trail, the snowmobiles go through and stuff like that. Um, that was a change in my life, but you know what? I didn't like some things in the beginning, but you know, at the end I had to tolerate it and there's a lot of good that comes out of it. There are gonna be bad apples and everything. You know, I have um, four wheelers go through my hay field once in a great while. I have horses, I have bikers, but you know what? You can't take the 99% to do the right thing and, and take that 1% and let them ruin it. If you do these ordinances and get rid of them, I think you're gonna open the wild west up where you have no rules anymore. You can't call Ken up. So I got a problem with riders going through my land now because the, the four wheelers are not gonna go away in Johnson. They're still gonna be riding on the back road. They're still gonna go through the class four roads. Um, you have no recourse after that. So right now you can call up Ken and say, you know what, your club's really messing up. We had a lot of garbage up there. We have to run off or whatever. And Kenny's gonna have to uh, go there and make sure he makes amends of everything and try to make it better because it benefits everybody. Um, and then, you know, it's a slippery slope because now all of a sudden somebody doesn't want mountain bikers to go buy their property or snowmobiles. I just think that was right. Let's all get together. You know, I'm, I do both of them. I can see both sides a little bit, but, you know, get together, discuss it and try to figure it out so it works out for everybody and find out what the biggest complaints are and try to work on them. I think that's all we can do. That's all I got to say. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Alan. Okay, uh, Shannon, you're up. Hello, thank you for listening. I am a resident of Johnson. I have been enjoying ATV since um, 2013. Something I was introduced to when I'm um, was available for that. And it has become a every summer thing of my life. I'm a taxpayer. I did hear Michelle's question about um, how much money our taxpayers have invested into this. Being an Australian ballot, I was under the impression that when it's, it was presented, there could be only minimal changes. And I'm seeing a lot of changes and that is concerning. Um, the group that I ride with, we pick up trash, we pick up sticks, we clean the trails, we are kind, we are generous, we wave at people, we try to befriend people. Um, it's an enjoyable way of life. But if our taxpayers' payments are paying for lawyer fees to make changes on this, I see that as a problem from the standpoint of a taxpayer. Thank you. And, and, uh, as that was the second time the question came up on what it has cost the town. I really have no clue. Uh, there is whatever time Brian has put into it and some of the legal costs have also got rolled into looking at other articles. So it'd be pretty hard to, to pull it out and separate it. Um, Eric, yeah, it's, I, I think I've got about a less than a half hour phone call dedicated to this topic. Other than that, it's been consultation about the ballot and the warning in general. Okay. It's, it's fairly routine to send the, the warning to the lawyer before uh, we print That's, it. As yeah. well. that out because they need to throw yeah. it out. We do that every year. Yeah. And t this is a very odd year because of COVID and we're doing things a little bit differently. So it's a little rockier. Yeah, uh, because of that, we, we are, we're spending a little bit more time with the attorney because uh, it's not, we've never done Australian ballot for the whole thing before. So uh, it's a little bit different this year, but it, it's not, it's not costing us an unusual amount, I wouldn't say. I think it, uh, if I could just say, I think this also just really highlights an even maybe bigger systemic <laughs> issue around how the layperson 
writes a petition, knows how to write a petition. I mean, this is this is not easy. This is, um, we don't learn this in school. <laughs> we don't, you know, this is not something that, you know, regular folks who, who haven't been, you know, a chair of a board for 20 years or a town administrator or a lawyer ne know necessarily how to do. So I feel like it, um, we should, uh, as a board going forward, um, figure out a way to provide more, um, I, would, I would say more assistance, more, um, more education, more, um, uh, yeah, just to make this process easier for people who, who have concerns, who have questions, who, who want to be part of this process, but feel either like they don't know how or intimidated or, or whatnot. Um, so I think this, this really highlights even a bigger, a bigger issue. That's fair. Uh, Neil, I see your, your hand too, but I, I've got a couple people ahead of you. Go ahead, Brian. All right. Uh, Spencer, I've got up next. Okay, Spencer, go ahead. Uh, yep. Uh, I just wanted to address what Alan was saying. Um, I truly feel if, uh, and I'm not saying like, the petition i'm not part of me wants to let it go to the town of johnson so we can take a vote and see what the true outcome is i in my heart i really feel like a lot more people are, would not want to get rid of the ordinance but who knows but like alan was saying i really feel like it's like one of those things if you take away right now we have kind of rules speed limits such like that i'm unfortunately can't um, watch everybody but if you get rid of those like Alan was suggest saying, um, people are still going to do it, and then they're almost. It's almost like telling a eighteen year old he can't drink. He's going to try to hide it even more and drink on the side, you know, stuff like that. Like I feel like he was saying, you're going to open up Pandora's box, and people are still going to do, and they're going to try to hide it and be sneaky or speed even more because they know they're not supposed to be there and stuff like that. At least now. And what us as a club is trying to do is um, the hard thing is the funds to like to have a sheriff go up and down the road, but you know, it's really expensive. And that's something we brought up to the sheriff's department before us donating money out of our club. Um, Cause I think like one of the two biggest things is like people are saying, there's a lot of ATVs going by, you know, the speed and the noise is a big thing. And I get it. Like I live right on the rail trail too. And I, hear snowmobiles and all that you know and like Alan was saying it's something that you know I think that makes Vermont it's you know we don't have theme parks here and we don't have big golf courses and all that kind of stuff so I think like we got to try to enjoy nature and um but yeah if we get rid of this ordinance I truly feel like it's just it's not going to stop the people and then um it's just going to make people break the rules essentially even more because they know they're not supposed to be doing it. But that's my input. So yes, thank you. Brian, how many more do we have? I've got uh, two more, uh, three more. We've had more than three already. Absolutely. You had six at the beginning. Yeah, I think I got a couple ads, uh, but I've got I know Bobby, Neil, and Kim have been waiting for a, a little while. Okay, when well, we go to those three and then we'll cut then it off. We'll, we'll cut it off. Okay, Bobby, I've got you up next. <clears throat> well, first I'd like to say that I like what everyone had to say about working together. Um, and like every sport, the snowmobile community has issues also. But being that we are a very active organization, um, we can usually get our problems solved within a day or two of a complaint. Um, and speaking at the entire um, situation, we got an email, the snowmobile community got an email um, just the other day from a resident on Gould Hill. Um, she inquired about um, some the tr Jolly Trail going down to Jolly Store 
and we got right back to her and her comment was, I greatly appreciate your quick response and the information you provided. It's a bummer to hear the news of closed land. We are right on the trail and so enjoy walking, running and strolling on the groomed paths, mostly in the evenings. Our experience with riders on Gould Hill Road or the trail, either snowmobiles or ATVs is nothing but amazing. All riders are respectful of speed and space as well as friendly. Here's to a great year of riding for you and your club. So I think that having conversations and working together would be the best thing to do because historically, his, historically motorsports evolved. Snowmobiling started 52 years ago in Lamoille County. Um, and it started with farmland and it started with old roads. And I don't think that we should let our Vermont heritage go away. And I think that we should work together to come up with some answers to some of the problems some people are experiencing. Hmm. That's just my two cents. Thank you, Bobby. Okay, Neil. So uh, what Kyle was saying about um, it not being obvious, uh, nor is there some kind of template uh, on the town site that explains how to write uh, a successful article. Uh, I do know that Kirsten spent some time looking at the state statutes and tried to model her questions after that and got other uh, advice as well from lawyers. So the, the questions, um, you know, the intention of course was that they be legal and, and, and um, ones that would, would uh, function. And so I hope, and, and we spent a lot of time last week revising them, hoping to make them um, better. And I, I would hate to see all that time wasted. I hope that articles uh, 14, 15 and 16 will be considered by the board um, as Diane, um, yeah, as Diane Osborne said, you know, the spirit of this thing is, is to get the questions out there so that voters can see them and vote on them. And whether there is a silent majority or turns out a silent minority out there, I know that there are a lot of people who, uh, there, this has been a 14 year experiment now since 2006 when the ordinance for ATVs passed. There was a lot of um, division back then. I think uh, the, the uh, vote won by about, I think there were only 10 uh, people uh, that uh, pushed the ATV crowd into uh, the win column. And I think it was something like 116 to 106 that suggests that there's a real uh, division in the town. It suggests that people, uh, the ATV club, VASTA is uh, at this point well organized. Uh, they come in and they, they I, I trust that they're trying to do the right thing. There are a lot of people on the other side who are not organized. They are landowners, they live in the houses that the ATVs go buzzing by. And as we know, the two of the issues that are really problematic are noise and enforcement. The noise issue is not going away. Um, all of you people know that, you know, there's a two, two mile sound print. We hear the ATV coming a mile off and then we hear it going away another mile off. And the noise issue is problematic because it directly contradicts the, the noise ordinance that you guys have on the books, which talks about the peace and quiet uh, that, uh, that property owners should be able to enjoy and uh, they too want to hear nature. I think the notion of, um, you know, what constitutes uh, uh, some connection to it is perhaps different between ATV riders and those who don't have them. But in any case, I think that uh, enforcement, the other issue, is difficult. I appreciate that ATV riders want to police themselves, but it, up where I live, it doesn't work. We have 
many people going over the speed limit and uh, people not writing single file. And uh, it's not always clear how to resolve these things. So if people were going to get together and try to do things, these two issues of noise and enforcement, I think are terrifically difficult. And, um, you know, I, I know that they're, the mufflers on ATVs uh, just aren't, aren't, aren't very functional. So we're, we're listening to uh, 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 90 to 100 decibels, which is like listening to a lawnmower. And if you multiply that by 10 or 15 ATVs going by at once, it's a big, big sound. So just in terms of the way it impacts property owners, I think that question, the article 14, that is, is um, suggesting that individual property owners have some recourse um, by which they can talk to a select board or and find out you know whether there is any way to um, you know uh, figure out uh, a way to um, resolve an issue like that is very important. So I hope that you will at least consider including one of the articles. I think 14, 15, and 16 are all simple enough and will be understood by the voters. And I don't think that the original uh, petition that was sent to you was ever meant to be one question. They were four separate questions and I don't see why you're reading them as one. Thanks. Thank you, Neil. Neil is there one more? Uh, one more, is Kim it? had been waiting and I apologize for to our others that are waiting, but Kim was the last person who had asked to speak uh, before we cut it off. And you guys are out of time, so I'm actually not going to speak. You should get on with your meeting. I okay. appreciate hearing from everybody, and I really appreciate that people can put each other in their uh, in in someone else's shoes, and that's what it's going to take to work through this. But all right, good luck. Go ahead and speak, Kim, if you want to. No, I, I I appreciated what Bobby had to say. I appreciated Diana's point of view. I feel like it it really is going to take people caring about each other to resolve the issue. And I'm really happy that the ATV writers that spoke about their passion for it. And I just would hope that they could be a part of the solution by, by having those talks with the people who are not being respectful of other people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Okay. Uh, obviously we've heard a lot of the merits from uh, both pro ATVs and, and against ATVs. But the question before us is the articles 13 through 16, what's the board's pleasures here? You need a motion, Eric, or a? I'm, yeah, I'm looking for some kind of guidance here from the board. Okay. Um, well, I move that we, that we, what's the language include, adopt, article. Um, include articles, whatever yeah. in, in the warning. Okay. Include articles 14, 15, and 16 as in, in the town warning as, as written. Okay, there's a motion, is there a second? Lack in a second, the motion will die and the motion dies. I'll again open it up to the board. Is there a motion on either individual articles 13 through 16 or the slate? I would move articles 15 and 16 be included in the warning. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? I just, I just, I, I think I'll reiterate that regardless of the, specific questions, the outcome is gonna be the same, that we're gonna to need to have a, some conversations about this as a community. Um, that's it, thank you. Any other discussion? Yeah, I, I agree with Matt. That's absolutely clear that uh, this discussion needs to take place. And uh, 
I like the fact that this is uh, our advisory because uh, while I'll be off the board, I would strongly suggest that this become a important that item on your ag agenda to revisit this and uh, de bring in both sides and hopefully uh, maybe you set up another committee like we had originally uh, on this. I think so. And I think since Dougie won't be on the select board, you should chair it. So uh, <laughs> we'll make that happen. Thank you for suggesting it. I'm, I'm going to pose the question to, uh, to Doug and Nat. Uh, with the comments you just made, would Article 15 not get us to that place that you're looking for? And why would you include Article 16? I would include Article 16 because there were four separate articles and Article 16 was, uh, it's, not a, it's not a substantial deviation. I think it's, uh, it's respecting the article as it was submitted based on how we're supposed to operate. Okay. And, uh, and I would argue that Article 14 is the same, the same way. I mean, we, we committed to, to allowing any articles that came before us that weren't completely outlandish to, to be on our warning. I think whether we, which one we agree to add or not add, the outcome is the same for, for how I look at it. That, that yeah, if that'll have to be included and looked at when the groups come together and, and um, talk to each other about what the differences are. That'll have to be included in the conversation either way. Mike, you had your hand up. Yes, uh, earlier, uh, one of the town people, uh, town folks uh, mentioned something about cost with the attorney. I, I can just imagine what uh, 16 would cost for a comprehensive evaluation of the environmental impacts of all class four roads. I can just imagine uh, the money we'd have to shell out for that unless we could find some grant money somewhere to do that. But then again, these are strictly advisory anyway. You know, uh, you know, talking uh, earlier about noise and everything else, good grief, uh, Harley Davidson uh, probably makes more noise than a uh, ATV does for crying out loud. We're we gonna ban those in the community? Well, not, not allow them to drive through the village? That's getting again to I know, the merits. I, I understand. And, and I'm trying to stick to the what's I got it for us. Yeah. I just thought I'd throw something in before I got you to help. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any other discussion on articles, including articles 15 and 16? That was the motion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hey. Okay, I'll have to take a roll call. Nate, uh, Nat, how do you vote? Aye. Kyle, how do you vote? Aye. Doug, how do you vote? Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Hey. The ayes pass. We'll have Article 15 and 16. Okay, uh, with that, I would look for the next item approve. I believe we reviewed the whole thing approve the town meeting warning and also set informational meeting warnings. I look for a motion on that with the changes of deleting articles 13 and 14 and the rewording of article 12. And that would be the warning as we've gone through it line by line. I would so move that. Okay, and I'll take that a motion just for the as a motion just for the warning at this time, and then we'll yes come back to the informational meeting. Yes. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Any more discussion? I just want to say that I again that I really hope that we that we in the future um, help uh, you know make make the process as. Uh, easy and clear for folks as we can. 
for submitting petitions. Do we note it? Any other discussion? I will say in general, well, not in general, I think that people on these issues that have been hot button issues have all been speaking to the truth from the, where, where, they, where they come from. So it's going to be a, a community effort when you get to the merits of, of working this out. So noted. Any other, Mike? We were talking about how to write a proper petition. <laughs> uh, I think that they do well not to uh, consult the town administrator or three of the current select board members because you folks didn't do a very good job helping this lady out. Again, duly noted. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the warning as presented with the changes signify by saying aye. 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 Those, those opposed? The warning passes. And now look for some informational meeting warnings. Do you have some suggested dates, Brian? We talked about trying to have a weekend and a weekday. Mm -hmm. Town meetings, uh, what, March 2nd? Yeah. Okay. So if we backed it up to Saturday, that would be February 27th. Sorry, I'm going to open my calendar on my phone. The computer's not going to let me do a calendar while it's hosting the meeting and doing everything else. When do the ballots get mailed out, Eric? Uh, I don't know. You have to ask Rosemary on that. Yeah, I'm going to rely on Rosemary for... Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to unmute you, Rosemary, if you can answer. Board has yet to officially decided if they're going to mail to all voters, registered voters or not. And we have been authorized, right? From yes. The latest, yeah, okay. Yeah. And they need to go out before February. Um, it's 20 days before the meeting. So why don't we have that on our agenda for uh, the first meeting in February? Next yeah, next week. Next week. Okay. So the first, the Saturday backing up would be the 27th. So that gives us our meeting that's required to be within 10 days. Um, we could back it up to the other weekday meeting. Uh, we could do that on Monday, February 22nd. I think we should do it the 15th. The that's week our before. regular meeting. Oh, that's our regular meeting. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. I just think somewhere in that week, because people have had their petition for, or their ballots for a solid week, we do one informational session and then do another one the next week and then it's town meeting. When, when do they get the town report? Oh, that's a good question. Rosemary, the, are you still the, unmuted? The third week of February. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So they get their somewhere between the 15th and 19th or so? Yes. Okay. I'd like doing it one week before uh, town meeting on the uh, 23rd. But we're gonna have two, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think the one on the on Saturday, does anybody object to the one on Saturday, the 27th? That's a good idea. Yes, do that. What time would we do it? Um, I don't know, would you prefer an evening or a midday? I'm really trying to think about what would be most convenient for, for folks. Um, midday is mid, usually mid afternoon. I think, hmm, I think evenings for families anyway. I mean, usually, 
But during well, the weekday, the, the one during the week will have to be in the evening. Yeah, just true. to accommodate every all of the select board schedules. Mm -hmm. So we, we've got one that's definitely in the evening. If we want to be mm. at, like kind of accommodate as many different people, maybe we want the other one to be. Like the like, one on uh, Saturday, we could have at one or two in the afternoon, and then the one on uh, Tuesday, kind of our regular evening meeting time. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, some of the seniors might appreciate an afternoon. Yeah. Okay. I'd uh, like. Could I ask Rosemary a question? Go do, ahead. Do, if the ballots go out, how many? How often? What's the percentage of them, or uh, do you expect uh, them to be um, voted on and back in quickly, or so these informational meetings and the uh, uh, and the uh, town report will be in hand before they send them back? You know how you know, we've got the information and the ballots are already out there to be voted. I'm sure we'll have some come in before the app informational meetings. I don't know how many. Yeah, that was my, that was, that's why I was thinking even the week before um, to have one, but. Sooner the better. Because people will get their ballot before the town report is even out. And that's just because it takes so long for them to print, Rosemary, the, the reports. Yes. yes. Bummer. So the, I guess the question is those folks that would vote before they even have the town report, they're going to be voting on the budget, everything, without seeing any of it. Yeah. Uh, would they even attend an informational meeting if they're willing to vote? before they even have the information in front of them from the town report. So we have to hold two meetings. Can we hold more? Uh, we, we can hold more. We only actually have to hold one, uh, but the board suggested that they'd be interested in holding two. Okay. You know, we can devote a little bit of time to it at each of our upcoming select board meetings if the board so desires. That would be a good idea. I don't think so. Why not? You could you could de devote an hour or something to it, couldn't you? Yeah. Between the depends on what we have on our agenda. Yeah. I think it's, what are we thinking? Actually, more like an hour and a half, Brian, or two? I mean, I don't know. For our inform informational meetings, I would I would probably set them at an hour, um, just in case if attendance is low, we don't want to be committed to being there too long. I don't think that's going to be the case, but uh, th that's a possibility. So yeah, I would say set the meeting at an hour, we're guaranteed to be there for an hour. And then if discussion's going, we can, you know, stay a little bit longer, um, but not an unlimited amount of time. I think that's being optimistic. We've spent over an hour discussing one article. Yeah. <laughs> and this will be about the merits as opposed to the this will be everything. Yeah. This will be the budget, the the uh, every single article. Yeah. I could easily see it go two hours. Yeah, I, I think two hours is more realistic, but uh, holding two informational meetings, I'm not sure what our attendance will be like at both meetings. So the luxury we have in this meeting here is we could shut down discussion when we had to move on in our agenda. If we're at an informational meeting, the whole nature of the meeting is you would not shut down discussion because yeah. that is the purpose of it.
So the proposal, the last one I heard was Saturday the 27th and Tuesday the 23rd. Does the board want to change those times, dates? Do it. Did you say do it? Let's do it. Okay. I look for a motion. Let's do it. It's not a motion. I make a motion that we hold informational meetings on the 23rd and 27th of February. 23rd at 7 p.m. And what the, what time on the 27th on the Saturday? 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Okay, that's the motion. And second. Um, yes, that's that's the motion. Okay, we got a motion. Second. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed. The eyes have it. Thank you all. Long night. Uh, discussion on COVID-19 exposure. So bringing the board up to speed, uh, one of our public works employees uh, has been uh, exposed to a COVID-19 positive case. Uh, the individual is uh, home isolating, uh, he had a recent test done uh, that'll be a negative test. This coming Wednesday will be seven days in isolation and he's going to get another test done. Um, the recommendation uh, from the state's return to work policy is either 14 days uh, or seven days with um, 17 days with a negative test in low contact situations. Uh, so that gets into a little bit of our discussion about uh, policies and how we wanna handle um, the crew, right, especially right now with uh, you know, having a, a possible exposure and um, Hugh has some ideas about moving to a Kind of lower contact environment in the garage where you know sending people home uh, earlier doing less maintenance work in the garage kind of deferring maintenance work for a little while uh, and uh, possibly going to the extent of sending trucks home uh, with individuals so that they don't they have to spend even less time in in the garage and uh, in areas where they could have contact um, I generally support Hugh's position and Hugh's ideas. I think that this is, could be a pretty good way for us to reduce potential contact. Uh, and especially if we want to try and get our employee back on track a little bit earlier, uh, I think it's a pretty essential step to take uh, to reduce the uh, potential contact that employees have with each other. Uh, does anybody have any questions about the exposure or... Uh, do you want more details about kind of our low contact idea? When would the employee come back to work after the seven day with a, a negative test? With seven day with the negative test, he would probably be back by uh, this coming Friday. This coming Friday, okay. Maybe as early as Thursday, uh, but it really... Wednesday will be seven days since his exposure. We didn't learn about his exposure immediately. Mm -hmm. He didn't learn about his exposure immediately either, but it was seven days from his exposure will be Wednesday. He's scheduled to get a test on Wednesday, day or two to get the test results back. So realistically, he'll be back to work probably a week from today. Yeah, I think that uh, on Friday or the following Monday. Okay. Uh, for the seven days with a negative test, which is recommended for low contact situations. And I think that our normal town highway garage isn't, it's not high contact, but it's not exactly low contact. And uh, it also has the risk of, um, we don't have a backup highway crew. Like we, our public work next... works crew is our public works crew. Yeah. Uh, 
I have a question. Um, are there any insurance problems with our vehicles going to private residences? Uh, yes. Uh, I don't think it's especially high risk, but uh, yeah, the, whenever we send the vehicles home, whenever we do anything kind of out of the ordinary with them, it does carry an increased risk. Well, does our insurance, can we get insurance coverage for that? Will they, or will they, they say that's outside of employment or you know, it doesn't seem to me it would be in the, circ in the COVID circumstance, but I'm just curious what, uh, if we had a serious you know, problem with a truck there, whereas you know, if they'd say, oh, we won't cover that, you know, if we have an accident on the way home. I, I assume that, well, I'll just let that question stand. I don't have an answer from our insurance company. I know we're not the only town that would be doing that, uh, but I haven't talked to our insurance company directly about it. Well, Hugh does it every night, probably, and he, he takes the town truck home. Oh, uh, he does? Uh, that's on specific town business so that he can uh, run the roads at night if necessary. So he has to have it overnight. I would argue that the modifications that we're making to create a low contact environment in the garage, when we're ordering the employees to take the trucks home at night, that it's also part of work conditions and should yeah. therefore be covered. But I would agree, but I think we ought to have a phone call. Yeah. Company. Is the board comfortable with that direction if it particularly if it starts looking uh, like this virus is going to explode more. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sure. You know, some states uh, after five days with a negative, they go back to work. Yeah. I think Vermont's recommending seven. Yes, I know. I'm just saying what some states do. Yeah. The, the seven is the minimum. 14 is the recommended. Why don't you uh, go ahead and, and follow up with the, the probably go to the league first. Yeah. Uh, the insurance company. Yeah. Yeah. I've talked to a couple other towns that are, are doing this, so we wouldn't be out on a limb, but okay. no, I, I haven't brought it up to the insurance company yet. So okay. I'll talk to VLCT and get a ruling from them. Perfect. And uh, I'm assuming with a positive ruling, I'll, I'll move ahead with these changes. So this would be Hugh working from home a little bit more often um, and the, all the guys taking their trucks home at night. That sounds like the uh, consensus of the board. Yep. Okay. Okay. No, the next question, Brian and I had talked about a little bit. Uh, maybe we're a little bit fortunate. We've had uh, quite a few retirements over the last uh, so many years. And I'm putting the question before the board, is the board uh, willing, if we reached out to all of these uh, folks that retired in the last few years, if they still have their CDL license being a reserve for us, if for some, re you know, if the pandemic was to hit the town highway and knock out all of our highway operators, we would have this reserve that we could go to uh, if they still have their CDL license, they could come in and they, they know all the routes, they know the whole routine. Uh, they probably could hit the ground running fairly quickly and it'd be almost seamless with the uh, support for the community. Uh, but first of all, we just wanted to know what's the thoughts on the board if we reach out to them, at least see if they would be willing to do such a thing. I think it'd be a great idea. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah, that seems really proactive, which is a good, good thing. idea. Okay. But uh, if we have a union, we don't want to get into a situation where they would consider them scabs. <laughs> that's a bridge we'll cross if we get to it. Yeah, that's the truth. Okay. Uh, Brian, why don't you go ahead with that and we'll start that reaching out. All right. And there was two items that we added, uh, the union. Did you want to go into executive session for that one? 
Uh, at this stage, I was just going to let the everybody know that we'd received the contract and that okay. we're working then on go it. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, that's really it. We received okay. the contract. We're working on it. And as you guys all remember, Mike and I are the designated uh, board member reps to meet with the, the union. So the process has just started. And the last item was value mapping. Nope. Uh, Kim, I see you're still on. You're, you've done a little bit more work with this, so you're a little more familiar. So I'm going to ask you to unmute if you can and fill us in. But if you're not available. Hey, I think uh, you could do it too, Brian. It, it's um, uh, a night of getting on with facilitators who are going to help us to map all the special places in Johnson that um, we use, enjoy, think should have value. And I actually would defer to Lois or Eric Noose who have even more information or Brian. Um, but there is, I think, a post today in Front Porch Forum that again has the link and they've put so much work into preparing this. I really hope that everybody who's on tonight can like tell one other person um, and get on the Zoom at six o'clock. Nope, Wednesday, yeah, tomorrow. Wow, Wednesday evening. Yep, Wednesday, six to eight. Uh, the link is in the Zoom or is in the uh, Front Porch Forum post. I've also got a copy of the link that I'm happy to share. It's been posted in, in a number of places by Conservation Commission and the Planning Commission. Um, everything Kim said was great. Uh, we're going to have facilitators from uh, Fish and Wildlife, um, and they've got a kind of digital presentation, something that's well formatted for working online and for online collaboration, so it should be a really good experience. It's not just like trying to make do with uh, reading a whiteboard on the back of the camera or anything. They've got a lot of experience about how to facilitate and use uh, this technology in this environment. So I think it's gonna be a really great meeting and I attend, encourage everyone to attend. Our Conservation Commission and Planning Commission have put a lot of work into uh, hosting and putting this together. Um, you know, this is really about, you know, the, the what does, what, what is, John, what makes Johnson special for us and for uh, visitors? And what, what are, what's important to us about, you know, the, the outdoor and shared spaces that we have? So I think, I think it'll be a great discussion and uh, they've lined up some really good speakers and facilitators for this. So I'm looking forward to attending on, on Wednesday. Thank you, Brian, Kim. Uh, that's all I've showing on the agenda. Is there anything that anyone last minute want to bring up? If not, I'd go like, ahead, Doug. Yeah, sorry about this. Uh, a lot of people tonight uh, spoke about what they value and they are uh, in the community and you ought to participate in the values program. Do yeah, know that's it? great. Uh, and very true, Doug. I'd, I'd love for everybody on both sides of the ATV issue have uh, are very passionate and have a deep understanding of what it means for them personally to connect to the outdoors and with Johnson. And I, I'd love for them to participate uh, in this forum. You know, this is a great opportunity for us to create that framework that, that we'll spend going forward about, uh, the shared discussion and again, the shared values of why is this important and what does it mean to us? Yeah. Mike? The, the folks are gonna get their ballots before we have our informational meetings, right? Looking that way, yeah. Then maybe we ought to get one a little sooner. Well, the board already decided on that. I know, but we can still decide on another one, can't we? But they, we it lined, kind of, it, up, I, I, we lined I, I, it up with a town report. I, know, I thought the it, same thing, Mike, but the town report won't be out. Yeah, that's true. Boy, is this ever jacked up? 
It really is. It, it's not, it's not really a laughing matter either. I mean, we all laugh about it because it's kind of a, a nervous laugh, but you know, it, it's really too bad. You know, that we always try to pride ourselves in getting uh, information out there in a timely manner and the cart is before the horse. Yeah. But I guess it's just the way it is this year. And uh, I was in uh, conversations with Dave Williams a little while ago, a couple of weeks ago, and he will be attending those informational meetings and moderating them just like a regular meeting. Awesome. Uh, probably more appropriate than for us to will be the ones that they ask questions of, but okay. Cool. We have on our agenda for next Monday to, to brainstorm ways about uh, how we can get information, whether it be, you know, sending out our budget forms or, you know, act putting them online or as, as well as the directing them as we talked about to the, uh, to Kent Gardner's report. Okay. Have a communication to the public type of agenda item. Yeah. With any right. of the articles and things like of that nature. Okay. Uh, let's show us adjourn at I, nine. I do have a public comment. Okay. From who? Uh, Ken. Yeah, Brian, I was just wondering, could you send me that link for that meeting Wednesday? Sure. Uh, you still got the same email address? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. And thank everybody for putting up with us. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. Let's show us adjourned at 956. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.